uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box there or in the Q&A in Zoom. Um, I'll get to as many as I can uh, while I'm speaking. And uh, if there's any that I miss, um, we'll save some time at the end for questions um, then as well. So today we will be talking about things you should consider before you quit your job and go full-time in self-storage investing. So if you're signed up here to watch this webinar, then you're probably at least thinking about that. Um, maybe you are working a W-2 job right now that you're enjoying, um, but you're looking to get into real estate. Um, maybe you are just here to learn about it. You're just curious, um, or maybe you're at that point where you've got the bug and you are really working hard to find your first deal. Um, and when you're in any of those situations, there's questions that you should be asking yourself, things that you should be considering. Um, I, I know that when I was in that position, um, there were some things that I wish that I had known then, you know, that I've learned now. Um, so I wanted to take some time here to just have a, have a conversation really about some of those things. Um, so we'll talk about today uh, how to decide uh, between passive or active investing. We'll talk about uh, in the meantime, while you are employed, uh, if you're employed at a W-2 job working to learn, uh, we'll learn about why you need to have a team. And uh, we'll talk about, can you do this part-time? You know, can you syndicate? Can you invest part-time on the side, you know, nights and weekends? and if that's sustainable or not. So um, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about passive versus active investing. So we've talked a little bit about this before on our webinars, but I think it's important that everybody realizes that, you know, we're all different people and we all have different things going on in our lives. Some of us may really be excited about actively investing uh, in self-storage and some people may be more happy, they may be perfectly happy working a W-2 job that they enjoy and using some of the money that they're earning to invest passively in self-storage or whatever real estate product. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, benefits, uh, risks and rewards with both. Um, when I think of how, how I got started in real estate is investing passively in a few deals um, you'll find if you've not done that before and you decide to try it, you will find that it is much lower pressure. Uh, you know, if you are, if you're investing passively and it's a bad investment, you lose your money, you know, you hate losing money. Um, but if you are on the flip side, if you're an active investor where you are raising money from investors, um, if, if you have other people's money on the line, that adds a big layer of pressure on there. You know, for me, Again, you hate to lose money ever, but I would feel horrible about losing other people's money, much worse than I would about losing my own. So there are different, it's a different type of pressure when you are in active investing. So that's something that you should think about. Uh, you know, if you are, uh, if, you're, if you decide that you want to, that the passive investing is the route for you and you want to stay in a W-2 job, you know, if you, if you fail, if you, you know, make a big mistake at your job and you need to, you can go leave and get another job and you have that flexibility. Whereas what I found on the active side is there are so many more decisions that we have to make where our reputation is on the line. Um, you, you get, you get, you have that everywhere in life, but I, I, I believe that when you are in active investing, that happens more often. You have those more high stakes decisions to think about. So there, there are, these are the kind of things that you want to be thinking about when you are deciding if you want to stay doing what you're doing now and invest passively, or if you want to take the leap, um, you know, quit what you're doing and go pursue self-storage investing actively. Uh, in case I've talked to you out of active and you really uh, were really excited about active, I should also say that there are some obvious rewards with active investing. You know, for me, I've, I found that I'm a real estate guy. I love the game. I love playing the game. And there are financial rewards as well to this, um, to, the, to investing actively. So for me, it, it turned out that for my family, 
uh, for me personally, that was the route that that I wanted to go. That was the route that made sense for everybody um, in my life. <clears throat> but what I'll say is this, if you are on the fence or if you're just not really sure yet, my recommendation is to start by investing passively. So whether it's a, a syndication that you may find, um, like I said, we have offerings that are open right now uh, at passiveinvesting.com. Try, try investing passively first because uh, for a couple of reasons, first of all, it'll help you learn real estate if you don't have a lot of background fundamental knowledge about real estate, it'll help you learn the process. Uh, you'll learn all the terminology, you'll learn strategies, and you'll learn a lot about whatever asset class it is that you choose to invest in. But then it'll also, in preparation, if you, didn't, if you end up going the active route, it'll also prepare you to be a good operator um, or to avoid being a bad operator. Because if you are investing your money with someone else uh, who's responsible for that investment, they're going to do things right, hopefully, but they're probably also going to make some mistakes. And you will have a unique ability as a passive investor to see those, those good and bad things uh, that, are, that, are, that are done by that operator. And then that will inform you as you move on to putting deals together yourself, that will inform you on best practices, on things to avoid, and it will make you ultimately a better operator because you know firsthand experience what things look like to a passive investor. So that's my recommendation if you are still considering if this is something that you want to pursue full-time or not, start by investing passively somewhere. Um, and I that will, it'll give you a lot of knowledge uh, for if you decide to move forward with active. And you may also find, you know what, this passive investing stuff, I like this. And maybe that's where, that's the direction that you want to go. So that's what I usually recommend to people uh, when they're making that decision is start passively and, you know, learn what you can learn there. If you decide that you definitely want to go the active route, you want to be an operator, you want to syndicate self-storage deals. And I'm imagining that a lot of folks who are tuning in here are in that camp, um, which is great. You know, once you've got that bug, you know, if you're, if you're working full-time right now, um, you know, you've got a day job and you're, pers you're, you're wanting to pursue self-storage investing, once you've got that bug, you can feel a rush to get out of what you're doing now. I know that because I had that. Uh, when I kind of realized that, you no, know, this is what I want to do long term, I felt like I needed to quit doing what I was doing, you know, immediately. And I was having trouble getting traction at the beginning because I was trying to do everything myself. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I was in, I made the mistake of being so much in a rush that I missed out on learning opportunities where I was. So at the time before I, the, the last thing I did before going full-time into self-storage investing was I was a CFO for a family office here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I ran all of their commercial real estate portfolio. It was a fantastic experience. And there were, uh, there were times in my final months there where I missed out on lessons that I should have and could have learned at the time because I was so focused on getting out. Um, and uh, not because I was unhappy, but because I was really excited about self-storage and investing on my own. Um, it's, it's, it's something that you will be tempted to do, but it's something that you should be careful that you don't do. Um, work to earn, or I'm sorry, work to learn is what I will say, not just to earn. Um, you, you know, if you are most likely you're in a career where there's still opportunities that you have that you can be learning lessons about business, learning lessons about real estate, just learning lessons about life as you continue on in that career. So be planning, you know, take, be, be intentional and take actionable steps towards your investing career, but don't be so rushed to quit what you're doing that you lose out on opportunities to learn lessons. Work to learn um, is, is my advice there. Um, I'll take just a second here and check questions. I don't see any that have come in. I see one here. When investing passively in one of your funds, uh, what is the commitment time? 
Um, so it, yeah, that's specific to passiveinvesting.com. I think the question is uh, how much time do we have to get in uh, our funds uh, once you commit to an investment? Um, that will be in the offering memorandum if you it, um, if you do sign up. You, what the way the process works for us in a nutshell is you will submit a soft commitment, and that's saying that you're interested. You know, this is what you want to do, and then you have a certain amount of time to get the funds in. Um, to secure your spot. Um, all those details will be in the offering materials. So um, I'll, I'll refer you to that, but good question. Um, okay, I'll uh, keep moving here uh, since I don't see anything else. So I also wanna talk a little bit about why you need a team. And this is gonna sound kind of obvious, but uh, this is something that I learned very much from personal experience is two things. You're not good at everything, and you don't have time to do everything. Um, this, we're all, again, like I said at the beginning, as we all know, we're all different. We've all got different skills. There are so many pieces of real estate that have to be run well that you cannot be good at all of them. Um, and you don't have time to do all of them. Whether you are full-time in this or not, you don't have the time uh, to do everything well. So it's important that you surround yourself with people who are good at the things that you are not uh, if you decide to go, the, go full time into self-storage investing. And that kind of brings me to, uh, to my story um, and as it relates to the question of, can you do this part-time? Can you be a storage investor part-time? And I'll say at a high level, it really just depends on everybody's personal situation. You know, if, if you're working W-2 job, everybody's got a different one. Uh, everybody's got a different situation. There's really not a way that I could say that, no, you absolutely cannot, or yes, you absolutely can. It's just going to depend on everybody's work and family situation at the time. But I thought it would be helpful here to tell you a little bit of my story, um, because I learned some very valuable lessons as I was going through this process myself. And you know, I, we, we all, in everything in life, it's important that we be grateful for the opportunities and the things that we've been given along our journey. And I found that I've had an incredible amount to be thankful for, people that I've learned, learned from, people that have helped me through different situations like this. And I thought it would be um, helpful for me to share some of my story with you guys. So as I mentioned, the last job I had before I went into self-storage investing full-time I was CFO for a family office in Charlotte here. Um, again, as I said, it was a fantastic experience. I got to see a lot of different real estate asset classes and uh, learned a lot of lessons about buying, uh, holding, managing real estate. Um, great family that I was working for, really enjoyed it. Um, but I, I kind of got the, the urge, I guess, to do some investing on my own at one point. And once I caught that bug, I started doing what I just said not to do, uh, which is I started trying to do it all on my own. So I was trying to source deals on my own. I was trying to underwrite deals on my own, fund them, close them, all of that. And I was not good at everything in the process for sure. Um, it took me a very, very long time to find deals is what I found out I was the least good at was really sourcing deals. Um, so I, as I was, it, it was taking me a long time to get deals into my pipeline, you know, for lack of a better way to say it. And that was one lesson that I learned there was that I needed a team. So eventually uh, I partnered up with uh, Chris Bennett, who you guys have uh, seen before. Um, and when Chris, that was something that Chris was very good at, he is very good at is deal sourcing. He manages all of our uh, broker relationships right now. Um, that's just something Chris is very, very good at is dr drumming up those deals. So when Chris and I partnered up a few years back, we instantly had exponentially better deal flow than I had before while I was trying to do this on my own. The problem with that is I was still working full time and I didn't have the time to underwrite all of those deals in our pipeline. So, you know, while we were getting more deals in the pipeline, we were missing, you know, calls for offers, you know, from deals that were listed because I just didn't have the time to work through all of them because I was so busy with my job. We did eventually get a couple of deals under contract, 
Uh, one of them is here in Gastonia, North Carolina, that we closed on um, with PassiveInvesting.com is when we all uh, teamed up at the time. Um, learned a lot of lessons with that deal. Uh, had some hiccups that we had to deal with. Um, we're very uh, excited about where it is now, um, but we did learn a lot of lessons. As we were going through that process, we really expanded our deal flow even more because more brokers got to know us, more sellers got to know us, and we just we ended up having more opportunities of deals to look at. But of course, that made it even more stressful for me trying to underwrite them because I was already having trouble managing the pipeline that we had. And even though I was refining a lot of my systems and together as a team, we were refining a lot of our systems, I was still doing this part-time. And that meant that something was gonna have to give. And what it was for me really is I got behind at work. Um, so I was trying to balance you know, being a husband, being a dad, I have a bunch of church commitments and I was trying to be a CFO at the same time. And it was a very stressful time for me because I was getting behind on work and got to the point where I was thinking about my, you know, the storage deals that we were trying to do. I was thinking about those all the time. And I was also thinking about how much behind I was at work. And it was a very stressful time in my life. Um, so finally, uh, my wife and I had had a lot of conversations about this. We decided that the time was right. I was going to go ahead and quit what I was doing, quit my full-time job and pursue storage investing full-time. And that was a hard decision. And a lesson that I learned there uh, that I will pass, that, that I think is good for us all to keep in mind is if you are married or in a committed uh, relationship, make sure that you and your partner are on the same page about this. Uh, if I had tried to quit and, you know, without the support of my wife, that would have been a miserable time for us. Um, we discussed it quite a bit, and that was very important that we did so. Um, but we got to the point where we were both comfortable with that, both excited about that. And uh, if we had not gone through that process, it would have, you know, no matter how much you think that um, you want to be in, you know, investing in real estate actively, if you got problems, you know, at home, those are gonna, those are never going to be good problems to have. Um, so make sure that you're on the same page with your partner if you're in that sort of a situation, because um, I'm thankful that we were uh, when we made that decision together. Um, so, so bringing all this around to full circle, you know, can you do this? Uh, part-time or not. What I'll say is for me, it required for, for us to really build our self-storage investing business as a team, it really took me being full-time in the investing business. Uh, when, we, when I finally did quit my job and went full-time into this, within the first three weeks of me being full-time, we had two new properties under LOI, uh, letter of intent. And that was a way better pace than we had ever had um, since I was trying to do things on my own, since I partnered with Chris, and then since we all five partnered together, um, that was, we, we were just having traction that we had never seen, that I had never seen before. So for me, the question of can you do this part-time or not, for me, you, I could not do it well part-time. I needed to make the decision one way or another I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full-time into this, or I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing full-time. And for me, it's been fulfilling to have gone the full-time investing route. Um, but again, we're all different. We're all in different situations. It could be that you may be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish by doing it part-time. And it could also be that you'll be happier working. You know, Maybe you're a doctor, or maybe you work at a bank, or maybe you're an engineer or, or wh whatever it is that you do, you may be happier doing that and investing passively in real estate. Um, but if not, again, everybody has their own um, situation. Make sure you think through a lot of these things before you decide to quit and just be prepared for the, the, the stressors and the headaches that you will have to deal with as an active investor in exchange for those rewards. Uh, so again, sort of a final comment, my recommendation to folks is that you try investing passively first, 
if you have not done that already, if you're brand new to the game, you'll learn so much about real estate. You'll learn so much about being an operator, how to be a good operator, how to be a bad operator. Um, and it will help you decide if investing actively is what you want to do or not. So I hope this has been um, helpful. Um, I see, let me see if there's any questions that have come in. Um, let's see here. Don't see any. Um, I see one uh, that's come in. I'll, um, I'll shoot you a message uh, offline there. Um, but uh, I don't see any others. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here for today then. Um, again, if you have not gotten your ticket yet for the Storage Investor Nation Summit, um, definitely sign up. Uh, the link was posted in that earlier. Um, you will miss out if you're not able to, uh, to join us. So highly recommend that. Thanks everybody for uh, attending here and uh, we will talk next time.